Classic, Blackfish Fanatic. Welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today I will be tying a uh, carry variant. Um, it's I call it my straggle carry. Um, I've done very well with this pattern with, uh, with one minor exception. Um, I've added goose bites on the side now. Um, I'm going to see how that works uh, um, uh, this, this coming uh, summer and fall. Um, I've done really well with this pattern, like I said, without them. So we're just going to see if that, that little bit extra of a hot spot attractor will help. So um, today, starting with a, a, seven B, a Hens BL 724 in a size 12, um, I will uh, switch over to the other camera. Uh, not that like that. I won't. So now I've switched over to the other camera. Um, so in here I've got a, B, a Hens BL 724 in a size 12. I'm going to be using some uh, for the tail. I'm going to be using some mallard flank uh, black. Um, for the body, I'm going to be using some uh, ice dub peacock black, peacock black. So it's kind of a great greeny black. Um, for the overwing, I'm going to be using some uh, some black hens CDC. Um, uh, for the uh, rib, if you want to call it that, I'm going to be using some orange ice chenille straggle. And then for the uh, um, for the for the cheeks, like I said, I'm going to be using orange goose by it. And waxed hemp fly thread. So start behind your eye. Leave just a little bit of room up there. A mill or two. Just I like getting a nice base, decent base down. It doesn't have to be perfectly touching, but because I'm going to come back anyway. So, But you do want a, a good base just so this doesn't slip, right? So now I'll do touching wraps all the way back up just to make sure it's completely covered. The uh, hook shank. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to stop a couple of mil back from the eye about there. So, so for the tail, I'm just going to grab a piece of uh, black mallard flank and I'm just going to, I'm not even going to, Peel it off of the uh, the center stem. Uh, sometimes you might have to if you don't have short enough ones, but I'm just going to actually just grab it to get bunch it together. And I wanted about the length of the shank sticking past, maybe a little bit less. So I'm just going to go back again. Now I can go open wraps. Right back to there. I've pinched off roughly. I've pinched off roughly where I want to want the tail but that's a little too short so I'm just going to pull that out a bit let's just see how that looks that's not too too bad so now I'm going to tighten that up two three wraps right there I'm going to put one wrap right underneath and behind that'll help hold that tail up now open wraps I'm just going to try to keep this on top it's good enough this all doesn't matter if that material is in there actually it'll help a bit help it uh, hold now this is wax thread that I'm using um, if you're using a nano silk or something every time you tie in a material like this especially something like this where there where it is a little on the slippery side make sure that you uh, that you uh, wax your thread okay but this is waxed, so I don't just don't need to. So now that that's tied in, I'm gonna uh, come back up again, open wraps roughly to my tie-in point. I'm gonna take my straggle, to make sure I get a nice end here. Just gonna lay it on. And again, this isn't gonna look perfect because it's gonna have these little straggles all over the place. You're not gonna ever see them. This is all going to be covered. So I am trying to lay it back as much as I can as I go back. And I want to go back to right where I tied in that tail. That's why I lift up every time just to see where I am. So now I have a choice. I can either um, I can either just do a regular 
dub. I can do a uh, dubbing loop or I can do a split thread technique, whatever I want. I'm just gonna just dub it on. Gonna give it a little bit of extra wax. It just helps. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this ice dub peacock black. Okay. Once I've got it caught in, I'm just gonna make sure it's tight. And then every time I go around, if it's not tight enough for me, I'll just tighten it, right? So, just wanna keep this, I wanna keep this body, it doesn't have to be thin, but you wanna keep it uh, fairly um, sparse. You don't need, you don't wanna keep it, you don't wanna bulk it up here like that. So I'm gonna pull that back a bit and I'm gonna just give that a bit of a tightening up on the dubbing. There we go. So that's about good there. Just gonna make sure I hold that all back. And then now I'm gonna counter wrap my straggle. Again, trying to trying to tease as much of this straggle back as you can. Now I'm gonna leave a bit of a gap. second here straggle got caught in the eye there so now we're gonna lock tie that in three times in front uh, behind sorry several times in front Gonna go back a bit here on top of everything. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my dubbing brush. And I'm gonna try to pull out. Actually, I'm gonna just so I don't look like a fool. I'm gonna uh, put a couple of half inches in there just so it doesn't stick out on me. And now I'm gonna take my dubbing brush and I'm gonna be fairly aggressive here and try to pull out some of that uh, that peacock underneath. fairly aggressive, right? So now if you don't want as much of this these long straggles, you can just go in there and just roughly, you know, chop them. Or you can use the shorter uh, straggle legs. Uh, but uh, I actually quite like it with these longer ones. So now I'm going to take a, two CDC feathers here, black CDC. So I've got two of them and I'm just going to lay them right on top of each other, lining up my tips and then I'm going to lay that down and I want this wing, this under wing to go about as long, maybe a little bit less than the tail but not much and I want this laying right on top so I'm going to give this a loose wrap and a second loose wrap just to make sure, see how it sits. Yeah, I don't mind that. So I'm gonna give that another half a dozen. Front, behind, nip that off. Okay. So now you can absolutely leave it just like that and put your bias on. I like putting an additional hackle in the front here. Now it's just as again a mallard uh, dyed black and I'm not going to put very many wraps on so I just grabbed a fairly small feather here and I'm just splitting my splitting the tip I'm gonna tie this in by the tip so I was my triangle tie-in point lock 
that in really nicely give yourself a half hitch just so you don't pull it out by accident get your whatever kind of uh, hackle pliers you use and just stroke all this material back and wrap and I'm only gonna probably get maybe two wraps out of this that's all I want I don't want a lot so that'll do right there perfect couple in front take my hackle pliers off bend this back Make sure I get that stem nice and tight in there. Nip that off. Let's come back just a little bit. Then I'm going to just brush, get those fibers to spread a bit. There we go. Okay, now, last step. I'm going to take two juice buyets. in this fluorescent orange. Um, I've also tied these in black and green as well and they work really well too. And then I use a, a green, I'd use a green uh, by it. So I'm gonna go about, maybe about halfway back on each side. Yeah, about there. So I've just tied that in. Now the, the, these goose by it's have a natural curve. Um, Let's see if I can show you guys. I don't know if it'll show up, but you can see that it's got a natural curve one way. I want that natural curve in. So again, about halfway, right along the side of the shank. Just gonna tighten that up. Let's see how that sits there. I'm just gonna make this one just go down just a little bit. There we go. Again, a few nice tight wraps. Hold this tight. What I do is I hold the thread tight, and then I've got a pair of tweezers because my fingers are so big and fat, and I just grab the uh, the ends of the bias and just pull them off. And if you don't get it all, get back in there, and get as much as you can. Okay, and then hold this back. I'm going to give it a couple more wraps. Now I'm going to take my whip finishing tool. Half a dozen wraps. Tighten that up. Cut off my thread. Get in there with your Sally Hansons or whatever you like. Hold everything back. A little tip for the beginners out there. I know most of the guys that aren't beginners will know this one quite well, but a little tip when you're doing that, sometimes you'll get head cement in your, in your eye. Take a small old feather, like let's just say this guy right here. Let's just, I'm, this is not an old one, but this is a little tiny feather and just stick it into the uh, the hole of the eye. So if I can get rid of that little fluff piece, stick it in, feather and all. Okay. And then just pull it through. And now that'll take the the uh, any uh any of the head cement that went in. Now you could do it with a needle as well. I just find that way it's a lot cleaner. So now I just give it just a for looks. Give it a bit of a stroke, clean here. And there is your straggle caddis. Um, I really like this pattern. Like I said, I've done it. I've done really well with this exact pattern in orange and in green, but without the goose biots. I'll see how the biots do, if they do any different, if they uh, add anything to the fly or not. So I'll find that out this, uh, this year when I'm fishing. But uh, um, yeah, tie them with and without and see how they do. Um, the CDC really helps pick up that light and, and, the, and the glare and it moves really nice. And, and then the, uh, the mallard flank, I really like mallard flank for, it, it, it is stiff to a certain degree, but it's also, it, it does move nicely. So, alrighty, so it'll, it'll, it'll hold the shape well. 
Alrighty. Well, hope you guys like that one. And uh, if you like that, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you subscribe, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next time video. Tight lines, everyone.